Hi everyone, thank you very much for tuning in one more time for Sarah da Silva podcast. Today I have this beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> and amazing woman beside me, Sophie. Sophie Pace Humphrey. Yes, I managed to see her name. That's my. I love the fact I'm not so Sophie. No, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> She was so worried yeah. about pronouncing my surname that she she's not called me. Right I now. always do that. I act. I'm I'm so so I don't so care. sorry. It's not a big deal. I was focused on <laughs> your surname. I literally this morning I was like Sabrina Pace Humphrey, Pace Humphrey, Pace Humphrey. But anyway, so well, uh, the universe has joined us through our, our hair. Yeah. She met, yeah. She literally messaged me something online about my hair, and then we start following each other Very and good. kind of engaging online until the day I said, "Listen, let's go for coffee," and, and it was amazing. I, I was thinking today about the day we met, and I remember I was looking at you telling our story and sharing it so much passion, and I was there. She's gonna be my friend. I love this woman. <laughs> <laughs> I did say, I did say, I did say, like, I just, I just, no, I just love your, your vibe and every, everything that you have been really doing and, and, and help and sharing with um, us. Um, Sabrina, she's the, is the owner of our, our, our that's another word, our um, PR agents. Mm -hmm. She ma she's the mother of four kids. Yeah. One, Grand, grand, grand child. child, which is amazing, and now you're building this UK, it's a growing UK fitness and running club. Yeah, um, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot, lot of things. And last year, just because she doesn't have a lot of things to do, of course, she just went and complete the toughest ultra marathon in Earth. Yeah. And not in the world, in, in the earth. 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 Uh, so, which is called? It's Marathon. called the Marathon, Marathon de Saab, the Marathon of the Desert. The ma wow, that was tough. We we're going to talk more about that. So, um, uh, but what I didn't share yet is she, I was, I was, um, that's not the word. She, which, you, would, you, would you say you suffer with anxiety? I, I don't, I don't feel like calling it suffer. No, I still do. I still do. I, I live with you anxiety. Do. I live with anxiety. Which is um, very controversial for the way, because of the story that you share and the mm. way you, you know, you just told me I don't like to use that word, but I'm no, going to use it to deal with that. Um, which people are going you're gonna understand once we start to talk about it. But I like the way that you you turned in, into something something Positive. that people, you know, a lot of people leave it in a very negative way. But you turned into a positive way, mm -hmm. and that's why you're here today. You're gonna teach us how to turn pain into power, power, power. pleasure, and power. <laughs> so, Sophie. Sabrina! <laughs> Just go Sabrina! I don't know why you have this so <laughs> be my hand. Sabrina, she's Sophie. not gonna want to be my friend. I need to sort out my shit. Two strikes, one more strike and she's out. <laughs> Sabrina, it's with you now. So your story is incredible. And the, the reason I wanted to, to have you here is because I know that are a lot of people out there nowadays su suffering, living with anxiety. Mm. And there are a lot of people talking about anxiety and how to get better, but I think the way you are doing it, not a lot of people are doing or no. sharing or talking about it. So no. I think it's very important to to have as well a million people <laughs> knowing about a million. that. That that's her goal. Yeah. So it's with you now. So how everything started. So I I believe anxiety is it's like if you can imagine it as a lock on the door a lock on a do the door to a life of joy passion and pleasure and i almost see myself as a bit of a gatekeeper in on that door and i am giving i want to give a million people the key to unlock that door 
What qualifies me to do that, though? Yeah. I was a teenage mum. I had my first child at 18. No qualifications. Um, As I said to you a moment ago, she was a surprise. She wasn't planned. And the life that I thought I would be living after I had her was very different from the life I actually ended up living. And uh, as a child, I suffered with anxiety. Um, My mother is white and my father is black. I grew up in a small market town in Gloucestershire where I was the only mixed race child. I, I knew no others, I saw no others. I saw no other black people, lots of white people. Uh, and within my childhood, I suffered with racist bullying for many, many years. I think it only really stopped um, when I was probably around about 15. Um, So there was always, I was such an anxious child. I was so shy. I remember going out of the house and grabbing my mum's hand and almost wanting to be invisible. I wanted to be invisible because I didn't want to be seen as different. Oh, no, just, uh, you're saying that, I just remember you telling me the way your mum used to do your hair. (laughs) How can you be invisible? So this, this (laughs) afro is like the holy grail of Afro. My mum, bless her, I love her to bits, but my mum had no idea how to style an Afro. So, and I will share a photo on Instagram with you later. All she used to do was get a brush, cut my hair short and just brush it. Oh my God. And then we used, she just used to pat it. (laughs) Pat and brush, pat and brush. So you couldn't be invisible. No. I, I, I could not be invisible. I, she had no idea that you could straighten Afro hair. So I used to see, um, you know, black women on the television with sleek straight hair. And I used to think, oh, how? Because I wanted to, I did not want to be myself. It's, and, a, it's, it's inter- sorry to interrupt, but it's, it's interesting saying that because, of course, I, I grew up in Brazil with a lot of black people mm. as well, white people. So mm. I was going to school and I, it's, it's very mixed mm-hmm. and um, and was going to the church was very mixed as well. But I still I I I knew the difference. Mm. You know, I mm. knew the difference. And even nowadays, looking back, they talk about kind of races, races and the way it, it's not said, but it's, you feel like yeah. in my case, I, I was a lot of I, I felt it. Mm-hmm. Like even when I start to get, you know, to, uh, this the date scene, you know, mm-hmm. and it's too young, still teenager. The guys were always go, they were always going to to the the straight hair mm-hmm. and the, the white girls. But um, in terms of hair, when I was around eight years old, my mom straightened my hair. And I remember how happy I was. Happy. I, I, she was aware, kind yeah. of the the. I just, uh, but yeah, I, I kind of relate. Yeah, you yeah. relate, and so many, so many women and men relate to that. Growing up, so many of the people that I currently work with and who are doing my online course. Part of the reason I think that my story and my uh, the course that I develop resonates with them is because they have felt different within their life like I I don't belong I don't belong here so therefore within them there's this this knot in the stomach of of being worried about putting themselves out there in business in their personal life in their social life what will they say to me will they try and bring me down we were talking about people pleasing earlier I think people that have dealt or deal with anxiety on a daily basis A lot of the traits that I see, again, within the people that I work with or the people I talk to on Instagram are this need to to be liked. Yeah. You know, I need them to like me. How how can they, what can I do that takes all my energy to make them like me? Whether that is from an Instagram point of view, a post gets a certain amount of likes. Whether it's a mum at the school gate who, I hated the school gate. I hate the school gate. Because I think the school playground, if you are not one of the, if you're like me, how I grew up, 
um, you know, you, you were different or you didn't quite fit in. The school gate is kind of like this breeding ground for cliques to form. And if you're not in the gang, you're just like you're just on the sidelines. I would affect your kid. I think it, I think a lot of mums who are listening to this and watching it would would say, in a sense, yeah, it does because you may be not invited to the half term play date or coffee and cake date, or you're not. And I've been there. You're not instantly invited to the WhatsApp group because you're not seen at the school gr- playground. I. From the moment my, you know, 18 and and when my life changed at 20, when I split up with um, my children's older, my two older children's father, I worked. I I worked. You know, I I knew I did not want to be a a percentage. I didn't want to be a statistic. Another young mum getting money off the state, not have, I did not want to be that. You know, I was so focused And that's one of the ways that I use my anxiety, and it's actually week one in my course, is get focused. Use that anxiety, that feeling in the pit of your stomach to think of something that you can do today that is gonna take that anxious energy and you can focus on it. So look, Sarah De Silva Leggings, don't, you know, if you turn around and text, tell me that when you started this business and you were going out and sourcing fabric and, that you didn't, if you didn't feel anxious, oh, yeah, of I course still, I still, you I still, still do. do. Yeah, I still, I think a lot of a lot of things. Like, I think for me, the latest thing that I'm dealing is the podcast thing yeah. and talk. Like, like I have prepared. Okay, so I had I I I, I, I repeated many times, yeah. but because it's funny because you're saying I, because I have this thing, I have to be good. I want people watch the podcast and really like it. Yeah, I I become more obsessed about do you know talk yeah. about it and just then i call you sophie <laughs> you know then do you know that's that's, that's, that's human, kind of, you know yeah but but do you know what i mean it's yeah, just like this absolutely. this it's almost an anxiety that i get just before that i get so nervous that i'm not focusing yeah. i'm not yeah. focused Focus. i'm not i'm not actually saying okay yes i have a lot of anxieties here yeah. i'm just i'm anxiety i'm nervous but I'm going to focus what I have to do. That's I'm right. not going to be thinking, oh, I have to get her name right. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I yeah. mean? I think it's a good example. Yeah. But that's something that I'm dealing with, and I still get for everything. That's it, that feeling, that kind of, you know, for, for me as a runner, it, it's, and, 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 and in life, I know, you know, even on my way over here, we met for coffee, we have a great vibe off each other, you know, we follow each other on Instagram, we're constantly like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But still there's that, that kind of feeling in me as I was driving over, like, I want to be really good for her. Yeah, I want I to inspire her, the people that are watching. I, I want to people please. Yeah. Right? And, and that, if not checked, can for me build and build and build into, you know, I've had times where I've turned the car around and gone home and made an excuse to wow. not do something. I swear, anxiety, if not focused, can can stop you in your tracks from doing the next right thing. To... Yeah, it's funny because, you know, we talk a lot about anxiety nowadays. Mm. And, um, like, I, I was never diagnosed. I never had any anxiety mm-hmm. attack or things, mm-hmm. something like that. But... <clears throat> I feel compared to years ago, like more specific compared before I had the business mm-hmm. and, and now, I feel like I, 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 I leave. I, so that's the question is, how do you, you need to go to the doctor, I know, but do you know, when do you push yourself, you think, okay, maybe now it's time to, to, to get look, some help. Yeah, to get some help. I think that, um, when I was medically diagnosed as having anxiety um, and, and suffering with depression, it was about nine years ago. And to the outside world, again, as, as many, of, many of the people that I talked to, to the outside world, every, everything looked great. I had an award-winning business, a husband who loved me, four, you know, four healthy kids, lovely house in the Cotswolds. But I would go to bed every night and I would be so sad. 
I would be so, and I would be crying. And I would be crying. And when I would wake up in the morning, and again, it's, the, you know, one of the three key characteristics of, of, for me, identifying when my anxiety is, is building again. And it's waking up in the morning and you know that feeling of, I just, I just don't want to face the day. I just... I can't wait to come back to bed. Yeah, I just want to pull the covers up and just make it go away. And I felt so dark, I felt so down and I just didn't know why. I, I felt hopeless. I felt hopeless. Now I'm also probably ungrateful as well because so many good. Yeah, ungrateful, and I would sit and I would think, "Why do I feel like this? I have everything that I wanted, but yet I felt as though I had nothing because I felt no that I just no hope, no joy. I didn't look forward to anything, and that's when I knew so. something's not right and. And I, th- I said to my husband, I'm, go- I'm, you know, I'm gonna go to the doctor. And I went to the doctor and I had a really, really understanding GP. And as many people that live in the UK, you know, if you go to your doctor, often you'll be asked to do a, like a questionnaire. I did a questionnaire and she, yeah, she turned around and said, yeah, you know, you, it indicates that you're suffering with anxiety and depression. Wow. And the, the joy, you know, I get quite emotional about it, but the the absolute kind of, oh my God, I'm not abnormal that I felt from having that diagnosis, that there's a reason, you know, I, yeah, there's, for me, it's like, that's what it is. I like, I kind of like to, la- I like to have things to have a label. Just understand. Just yeah, to, to yeah. understand and to know that, you know, at that time, I, you know, I was put on, you know, a mild fo- form of antidepressant. Um, I was offered talking therapy, which, whew, for me, has been a game changer. Really? Yeah. Uh, game game changer. <laughs> a game changer. And because I realised, and again, a second, you know, as well as that feeling of waking up in the morning, another thing that the people that are doing the online course and that I coach are like, I felt disconnected. I felt so disconnected from what was going on around me, almost as if I was playing a role, an actress, but it was a mask I was putting on. It wasn't really me. And I think a lot of people dealing with anxiety, especially what I call high functioning people. So people that do hold down jobs, people that are, you know, have kids or, or people that are building businesses, people, you know, it's, you see us out there and it looks like, you know, we, we, we have everything. But actually, when our anxiety is there in the background, there's this disconnect because actually we put that mask on. But if we're not looking after ourselves, our souls, and doing that which gives us hope, which is, gives us, you know, ignites our passion that's where it's like a breeding ground for anxiety to just thrive yeah it's bacteria it? yeah it's like bacteria it's like germs it just thrives and it wants that it wants that area where it doesn't want you talking to people about it, it doesn't want you to say sarah i'm really struggling today you know i come back to when we met for coffee and what yeah we've been, i've been following you for a while um and you know, again, I, as a strong, powerful woman who's very focused on, you know, your brand and growing it, I was like, wow, she's got, she's so confident. She's <laughs> building this amazing business. You know, her hair is amazing. <laughs> you know, she's gorgeous. She's Brazilian. Thank you. <laughs> wow, like, oh my God. And, you know, and I reached out to you about the braids. And then, you know, it was that one story you shared Yes, I remember. That really resonated with me. Yeah. And and it was when you were vulnerable. Yes. And you were saying, you know, I, yeah, I am. People think I'm, you know, I am confident. Not people think I'm, I am confident. But actually, you know, I, ha- you know, I have those days too, yeah. you know. And I you know, that's what I'm saying. Because for me, I think we, inter- um, we understand confidence in the wrong way. Yeah. 
like it, it's we understand it as something that you feel but I as I said I think what I, I have seen over and over again with myself is it's more what I do that makes me yeah. confident yeah yeah and uh, and the thing is I think one thing kind of pushes the other because the more I don't do the more anxiety I feel yeah. as well yeah it's just I, I always say the problem about me or like let let's talk about I don't know a diet no let's talk about the podcast for a long time I have been t saying I'm gonna do the podcast I'm gonna be start doing the podcast for a long time I started and I, I stopped mm -hmm. many many times and that was something that would kind of you know bring me this yeah. uncomfortable feeling because I was for my for me it's something that I meant to be doing, mm -hmm. but I wasn't doing. Mm -hmm. So all my energy was going on thinking how much of a failure, fa failure I, I, I am, that I'm not doing that, that I should be doing, that I don't do anything, I start and I don't. You know, so it starts, it's this thing, my, that's normally what brings me anxiety. And also going back to the, the like, because just to just listening what you're saying i'm kind of identifying in myself things that kind of makes me anxious mm -hmm. when i when i really 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 want to please people mm. and uh, i have like my, my husband knows sometimes i i'm bad and i can't sleep because i'm thinking about one situation one very small situation mm -hmm. that maybe it wouldn't affect anyone mm -hmm. but it affected me and I just can't sleep because I'm thinking about that person mm -hmm. and the way we uh, engage during the day mm -hmm. and the person is probably not even thinking about me mm -hmm. but it's just it's just this feeling so as you're saying the the people pleasing people I pleasing think, yeah. yeah people pleasing uh, not being able to sleep at night for worrying about out of all of the positive things that have happened within 24 hours that one thing that wasn't so positive that interaction you've had with someone that kind of you were thinking oh were they were they not happy with what I did there yes or that email that you received that you think whoa because email has no tone yeah so someone could be in a hurry and this is what I see a lot. Someone is in a, in a hurry sends an email. You're you're in your office or you're at home. You receive said email or text, and you're like, "Whoa, whoa! I don't even get a kiss <laughs> yeah. or a smiley face." Yeah, no, like, I, it's funny. And you that. read it. You read it in the state, the, the emotional state that you're in. You are. Yeah, it's more about you. Isn't it's it? more about you than it is about them. That happened with me yesterday, though. The funny thing, because I sent a text message to someone. And I didn't receive the answer that I wanted to. Do you know, I, I, re I received some emojis, mm. but I, in my mind, I thought I wanted that answer. Mm. And again, took me a few hours of thinking, or oh, maybe that person doesn't really like me, mm -hmm. or maybe it's just, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's that anxious mind. It's the... Um... It's the, what could I have done differently? What are they thinking about me? How can I change this to make it, to make it, to make me get the, the communication what, yeah. that I want or that I, you know, what does that say about me? Oh, I'm a bad person. I'm a really bad person. No one likes me. Yeah, like what did I do? Yeah. Did I do something wrong? Did I say something wrong? It's, Maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's the snowball effect that comes from I call it the, 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 you know, the demon on the shoulder. You yeah. know, one side is my little devil that is my anxiety devil. My anxiety devil says to me, you're not good enough. They don't like you. You can't run a business. No one wants to listen to what you have to say. They're sick of hearing I do. it. You know, <laughs> they're sick of hearing about you talking about it. You know, and if, I, if I'm in the wrong emotional state, normally if I'm not being kind to myself, I'm or I'm not well. using my anxiety in a positive way, being focused, making a commitment to do something, doing it, doing it, but actually, then, yeah, because... actually doing it, planning and doing it. If I'm not doing the next best thing 
that I have proved to myself time and time again helps to tell him to shut up, then that will consume me. Yeah. And I've, I've been consumed with anxiety. I have turned the car around of things, I'm, places I'm supposed to be and pretended that I'm ill or whatever. Um, that's where it takes me. My anxiety, as with many hundreds of thousands of people's anxiety, wants me to disconnect. Because if I'm alone, if I'm not talking to anyone, it's easy yeah, for it just, to talk to me and overtake me. Just to, to make sure that we, we send a strong message and I, we be, through this podcast, we're mm. going to be able to help a lot, mm. at least maybe a million. A million <laughs> people. Maybe a million people. A million people. <laughs> But I just want to go, because you have developed the 10 steps yeah. to use anxiety to achieve yeah. um, accomplishments. Yeah. And so we, you mentioned there four already. Yeah. So let's try to go through the steps. Okay. So we can. So to focus. Very, yeah. First and foremost, everyone listening to this podcast will have something that this year that they thought, I'd love to do that. Whether it is to travel, whether it is to run a marathon or run a 5K or whatever, to get fit, let's say, to lose weight, to change career, to be promoted. So everyone has that something that they're, they haven't done this yeah. year. They haven't done it for whatever reasons. Mostly top three reasons that people don't go on to achieve that I've seen. They, they say, I can't afford it. I don't have time. I don't have the support. Three okay, top reasons. Yeah. So number one is to focus. It's to get really clear. This is what I want to do. This is my goal. And it is to immerse yourself in that. So I talk, talk about the Marathon de Saab as a case in point for the, 10, to, for the 10 weeks because it really is through me running ultra marathons. So taking myself past an ultra marathon for anyone that doesn't know is any distance past 26.2 miles 42.2 kilometers. So even if you run 26 and a half miles, you're an ultra marathoner. So it's long distance running. Yeah, but the one that you took. <laughs> it, it, it was in the <laughs> Sahara Desert and it was, you had to be self sufficient. It you was 165, to... <laughs> 156 kilometers. It was taking it to a different level. But To, to channel my anxiety, the anxiety I felt around that, Sarah, because I had never done an ultra marathon before I signed up for the Marathon to Sarah. You see, but like, when you say that, I think, well, but you were there. Why, were you, why would you have any anxiety? Because you're such a winner just to be there. But I was at that point, I had run marathons, yes. But again, my anxiety was telling me Mar marathons that's that's you know that's that's your limit that is your limit you know it was put in the me in a box and it was it was I was coming up to being 40 I'd given up alcohol so I'd stopped using alcohol as a way to cope with life yeah again many people many women and men one glass a night turns into half a bottle turns into you know yeah. and I had realized it was it was a, no 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 that's enough So I was like, my 40th birthday's coming. What can I do that is a real challenge, is going to get me outside my box? And, you know, I've started living my life saying, you know, when I'm on my deathbed, what do I want to look back and have no regrets about? And for me, there is peace and there is uh, enlightenment in using physical activity as a way to achieve spiritual growth. Yes, I agree. Just, you know, absolutely. And I had watched this documentary on Discovery about uh, a UK rowing Olympic gold medalist uh, called Math uh, James Cracknell. And he had run the this toughest foot race on earth. And as a... <laughs> Oh yeah, I want to do that as well. And I was sitting in my living room watching it one night, and I and it was in this desert, the Sahara Desert, and I hate 
running on sand. You know, I hated running on sand. The little bits of running I'd done on sand, I was like, oh my God, it's horrible. You sink into it. And it's very tiring it's really as well, yeah. really tiring. And 40 degrees. And it was hot. It's 40 degrees plus. I didn't like running in hot conditions. So I was like, it's another reason not to do it. Yeah. Snakes, I'm really snake phobic. I really, I always have been. I'm really, 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 How really. How many snakes have you seen in your life? Probably only like two, <laughs> apart from in the zoo. It's like you live in Amazon, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> but I really have, I, I think it comes from my mother. She was very snake phobic. I have no problem with spiders, but snakes. So, you know, snakes in the desert. <laughs> It's all there, yeah, you just imagine. And, and running, uh, you know, 153 miles carrying everything that you need on your back. So James was carrying everything he needed, his food, his clothes, his medical supplies, his sleeping bag, everything. You carry it yourself while you're running. And I can remember watching that program and anxiety on my shoulder said, you could never do that, ever. Like, don't think about that. And I thought, you know what? I want to do that. I want to, I want to see. Just shut, shut up. I want just to shut it up. I want to do that. You can never do that. You could never do that. It's too expensive. You could never train for it. It's too much. You could never do that. And that night, I, that voice that was like, you could do that. You could try and do that. So that would be your second second step. That is, so the, the focus is having something to focus on. It was the marathon to start for my 40th. And then actually decide to do something. Yeah, that's it, to commit. Because that's the biggest boundary is to commit to, to doing something. And for me, how I commit to things is for me, if I'm, in, if I'm spending money, I'm going to do that thing. Because I grew up in a poor family. You know, our family was poor Um, we had nothing new, you know, we, we again, we, we, we lived, you know, on the state benefits, we were poor, so I grew up, like, money is precious, so if I'm going to pay to do something, I'm, I'm going to bloody do it, so I found out when the marathon to Saab was opening, and this is the thing, it doesn't need to be a marathon, It's just find that thing that you want to do that you've been putting off to, focus on it. And then you know what? Commit to it in whatever way you feel is appropriate. For me, it was money. It was a 500 pound registration fee, non-refundable. And then you set you would set up a payment plan for the rest of it if you wanted to, to do it that way or you pay up front. And once I had paid that 500 pound, I was like, it is on. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going. Share I'm going. With people. Yeah, I'm going. The third part of that then was to find my tribe members. And and basically what I mean is a support system around me that would help to facilitate me reaching that goal. So the accomplishment for me was to cross the finish line at the Marathon de Saab in 2018. That's just for me. For other people watching this, it might be to get that promotion. It might be to get that job. It might be to lose half a stone. Yeah. But it's what, who can I get around me to achieve that end goal. And for me, within the course, um, so I don't want to give away too much, but I'll give two, two people. So I always think there's five people that need to be in your tribe. Two of those people. One should be someone that has done before what you want to do. Someone that's done it. So you someone, can look and say, well, it is possible. Yeah. I cannot. Yeah, you can talk to them. You can sit down for coffee. For me, I wanted to be coached, because I totally believe in the power of coaching, by someone that had done it before, someone that had done it well. Who was it? It was a fantastic woman. She's won the Marathon de Saab twice. Her name is Elizabeth Barnes. And I contacted her, I emailed her, and I said, do you coach people, physically coach people? Because I need, I need a plan. And we had a telephone call. She told me, this is what I do. 
this is how much it costs a month and I signed up within the end of that week because I knew I needed an 18 month window going into this and I needed wow. to feel confident knowing that this is what I've got to do this week this is what I've got to do next week I had to plan I had to plan it I had to plan it and, then, and someone to be accountable as well absolutely because, yeah. because that's the thing for me Sarah I don't know if you're the same but well, I know you are because, you know, you, you put on your stories the other week about, you know, you're on your health thing now and you and your friend are accountable. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that within that gang, that tribe of people that I talk about within week three, it, it, it has to be, you know, someone that's done it and someone that week on week you can say, yeah, or they can see she's done that, she's done that, she's done that. Because for me, I can get into the, you know, I always start well, I start well. And then I kind of get a bit comfortable. And then I think, oh, well, maybe I can get away with not doing that. Yeah. And people that I work <laughs> with now, <laughs> yeah. and, and people that I work with now are exactly the same. Most men and women out there, what I'm, you know, what I'm saying now is not rocket science. But most men and women out there, they kind of ultimately, underneath all of this stuff, know what the next best thing for them to do is. Even if it's today, I probably shouldn't have two Mars bars for lunch. Oh yeah. Maybe I should have a salad. Yeah. But doing, knowing that and doing it are two it's different things. Place. Yeah, yeah. So therefore, another person within that tribe is someone that doesn't take your, bull doesn't, I'm not gonna swear, but doesn't take your you BS. <laughs> doesn't take your bullshit. Doesn't, when you say, oh, I'm just, too t I'm just too tired to do it today. For me, it's, I'm too tired to train today. That they're not going to turn around and say, oh, I'll probably you. just stay in bed. Someone that says, get your trainers on. And just go. And bitch. go. <laughs> because after you've finished, you'll feel better for going than you do now. Yes. I promise you. Someone that knows you. So that's the second person within that tribe. Someone that knows you and will not will not let you get away with these little things, these little manipulative behaviours that yeah. you do. Because it's funny, because um, the way it works in me, I literally, when I sign up for something, I am just excited, convinced that that's what I have to do. It's mm -hmm. amazing, I can mm -hmm. do it, and blah, blah. And then I started to create the excuses, and I convinced myself that actually I shouldn't be doing yeah. it. Yeah, it is just crazy. They're like, I, I can't convince myself of the, yeah. to, to, you know, do it and don't do it. Yeah. So it, it is very important. Yeah. And I, I also think, you know, it's very important because, like, uh, yesterday, la last night, I we were working all day, and I, I got home and I went to the gym, and I literally was driving, and I think I don't want to go, I don't want to go, I don't want to go, I don't want to go. I parked. I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go back home. Mm. And I, I had this talk with myself, like, will you stop? Mm -hmm. Do you know, because I, I, um, I had these excuses in my mind that would justify me not training. Yeah. Oh, you have to do this, or do you know, you're better off going home. And I was like, shut up, Sarah, mm -hmm. and go. Mm -hmm. And after, it just felt so good. I literally felt left to thinking, yeah. oh, that was good. That yeah. I went. That was and that, you know what, the ability of you to do that, shows me because of what that was at that time saying da -da -da, no 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 it's your anxiety devil on your shoulder it's just you know i've got all these other things to do i was just, haven't got time yeah haven't got time to make you feel better yeah give me someone that is going because you know one of the weeks in my course and it's a, it's a good way to illustrate this point about physical activity one of the weeks of my call, I call it move your ass to raise the vibe. I saw that, yeah, I yeah? like that. Yeah. yeah, move your ass to, to raise, raise the, the vibe. vibe. Because I have, I coach many women, part of my, you know, one of my hats is I'm a personal trainer and run coach. And three times a week I take my women out. You've seen me kind of out running with them. And probably out of those women that come out with me every week, around about a quarter to a half of them when they turn up, oh, you know, that's feel like you know mental health struggles or just not or just feeling tired etc etc and I always say to them let's just do the next best thing right and when I'm coaching them just focus on that bit of the run or focus on that point and then I always say to them you will feel better when you finish this than you do now 
and every single time they do you know you will never feel better you you will always feel better after having done some form of physical activity even if it's going out walking with the dog and that's a really really important part for me and for I many think people the power if you think about energy the more yeah. you generate, the yeah. more energy, you know, the yeah. more you move, the more yeah. energy the you generate. Yeah. And so it, it's exactly what, you, what you're saying. Because I always say, you know, going about the, talking about the fitness and mm. exercising, we have this thing that, oh, you need to go to the gym. And, no, your body needs to move. It needs to move. You needs, know? Yeah. It's From a, a biological point of view, what you what you want to release those feel good hormones you want that endorphin rush and that endorphin rush it's you you don't need to run marathons you don't need to go and smash yourself at a hit class i swear to people watching this just after you've watched this podcast just getting up and going out for 20 minutes just walking in nature you will feel better you will vibe will be raised yeah you will feel better when you get back than you did when you started absolutely yeah just move just move yeah i just uh, it is i think is the power of just keep to take a step take a step Do you know is it that's the power because then things can start absolutely happen yeah and, uh, not, with, and within with, that week i think that week move your ass to raise the vibe is i think it's week six um, because it comes after week five, which for me, what I've seen in the people I quote at uh, coach is that when you're halfway through something around about halfway and because it's a 10 week course that I've got online, week five is I call it don't quit. Not don't now. quit. Not now. Well, uh, there's this quote. I didn't come here. I, I, well, I didn't come to here. To, how, how is it? I, I didn't come this far to come this far yeah, yeah <laughs> you know? exactly and you often find through halfway through periods of change losing weight getting fit starting a business you get to that point where you're like oh, it's hard work man it's like, this is just you know it's energy i maybe haven't got some of the results that i thought i would yeah. that i set myself up to get is it worth it do i want to keep investing and i see it time and time again you know with online courses like the one that i've got you see a massive drop off halfway through whether it's 10 weeks whether it's 12 weeks and what i encourage people at that time is to just get reset is to remember why am i doing this what is that thing that i want to be achieving get that passion back that within all the energy, the work that you've done, you kind of think it all, because you do want it. So therefore going from week five, and I give strategies for how to kind of reinvigorate yourself within the course. So within week six, another way to reinvigorate is to move your ass to raise the vibe. Do something that, you know, it could be Zumba, it could be just dancing around the kitchen with the kids, it will the dog or the husband. Do something that makes you, Ooh. Just feel alive. Yeah, yeah. And then we can get on with that work to accomplish on week 10. And it's happening. You know, people that I work with are making it happen. It works. And why can I sit here and say that? How can you use anxiety for positive gain? Because I've done it. And people that are going through this course and that I work with I've, have done it and are doing it and are seeing the results. One girl I wo I've worked with who's done the course, her aim was that she wanted to build her business to a point where she could move from her bedroom into premises. Within four months, she's done that. She's looking for the right premises now. Wow. She needed the focus. She needed accountability. She needed just someone that had been there and done that to say, look, if you do these things... That little devil on your shoulder can shut the F up. Yeah. Because actually every day you're doing the next best thing. A girl that I've worked with who wanted to lose weight, her goal, I want to lose this amount of weight for a wedding. She tried diet, she tried this and that. So combined personal training with the motivational training, she lost her weight. She went to the wedding, she wore that dress. Her cholesterol level has gone from dangerous to her doctor said to her the other day, keep doing what you're doing because you are no longer in the danger zone wow that's amazing these are like real life transformations from people who just took a decision 
to do get it. focused and commit to it. And do you know that's that's something um, that I think people need to kind of change the mindset mm-hmm. as well. Because of course, uh, you, you, as you're saying, I, I, you believe in coaching, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it is it is powerful mm-hmm. thing. Because as I say, you're there, you've done that, you're helping you. Mm. You're co- they are accountable to yeah. have someone to to ask to direct and yeah. to to also say hey hey hey, hey. yeah <laughs> and I think um, that's like talking about uh, talking to you now you know if you've been struggling to reach your goal so I think a lot of the people that watch us and watch my podcast are moms are over thirty and just maybe had the baby and tr- they're trying yeah. to lose the weight and they're yeah. struggling with self-esteem and and it's as i always say the way is just the, the consequence of everything that is behind so maybe it is time to look for a coach maybe it is time to look for someone to to help you because the thing is you have been trying so many things over like maybe one thing over and over and over again so maybe it's time to say listen I'm gonna ask for help. Yeah. Ask for help, you know. That's and the professional word. help as well. Yeah, absolutely, you know, I have talking therapy. Um, I have done for years. Um, I see a, you know, a therapist. It is the best, one of the best investments I make for myself month on month. To have a professional who, now we've developed a relationship, knows me, knows my backstory, and can give me the strategies and advice that I need in my own life. But I also work with a life coach. I also work with a physical coach, you know, for my marathon running, etc. And the thing that I somebody said to me when I was in the, you know, the depths of my um, anxiety and depression, because I have been, like, I have been there, and I feel you, you know, and that thing that you'll be saying to yourself now, I, I can't have a coach. I'm not that kind of person. Like, it doesn't need to cost you lots of money. There are e-courses like mine out there that you can do your own time, your own way, with the accountability with me as well. But if you keep doing what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. exactly. So, saying that, if this woman woman wants to contact you, Mm -hmm. how can they find you? Well, on Instagram, of course. <laughs> on Instagram, of course, um, it's at Sab Runs Miles. Not Sophie. Uh, not <laughs> Sophie. So S A B R U N S M I L E S. S-A-B-R-U-N-S-M-I-L-E-S. You'll find me there. But also, um, I'm going to give Sarah um, a link to put on the show notes okay. as well. So if you're interested in the course and finding out more about it, then you can just click on that link. And a little video will come up with me Hi. telling you more about it. And um, also on my Instagram um, bio, you can click on there and click uh, anxiety to accomplishment and you can go there as well. But, you know, any questions anyone has, like I'm here, as you know, you know, I'm very vocal yeah, like yeah. Sarah is on Instagram and I'm there to answer questions. Ultimately, as Sarah alluded to earlier, in my life, the life that I have left, <laughs> I want to try and help a million people use their anxiety for positive outcomes. I want to flip the way people think about anxiety and actually say, you know what? This is kind of like a little superpower you have that you can use for positive gain. Sabrina, thank you very much. I could talk with you I could talk for, with you for hours. hours. <laughs> really needs to finish. But thank you very much uh, for you know accept my invitation to you for, for a podcast it was amazing uh, i have learned so much so much in this last 30 40 minutes or more i don't know how long you have been talking and do you know what we should do um podcast number two we should and uh, just talk about uh, even more about all this this <laughs> yeah we need to finish yeah uh, like someone is just like come on Sarah. <laughs> so thank you very much and thank, thank you. you guys for watching this podcast and i'm gonna put all the information you can go and follow sabrina thank you see you next time